Hey guys, welcome to Online Refuge, March 24th. I'm your hype man, Akeem, and I know it's a bit weird since none of us are at church today because of the coronavirus, so we have to stay home due to social distancing because we're trying to stay healthy and safe, which is a great thing, and we should all keep it up. But you know, it's a little, it's a little bit because we can't be there. But that's still good. That doesn't mean we can't be hype and we can't get ready for these songs and we can't be ready for Mike's message. And it's gonna be awesome the way that we're still able to do this online. So we can still all get hyped for everything that's gonna be happening. So I just want us all be ready for the songs that our refuge band has prepared for us, which is you know it's gonna be awesome and the word that Mike has for us. So everybody, just get hyped for it. the darkness fades into new beginnings as we lift our eyes to a hope beyond all creation waits with an expectation to declare the reign of the Lord our God we will not be moved when the earth gives way for the risen one is over and for every fear, there's an empty grave, for the risen one is overcome. Now the silence breaks, in the name of Jesus, as the heavens cry, let the earth respond. All creation shouts, with the voice of triumph. Declare the reign of the Lord our God. We will not be moved when the earth gives way. For the risen one is overcome. And for every fear, there's an empty grave. For the risen one is overcome. shall reign forever strongholds shall surrender for the Lord our God has overcome who can be against us Jesus our defender he is Lord and he has overcome he shall reign forever strongholds now surrender for the Lord our God has For the reason one is overcome And for every fear There's an empty grave For the reason one is overcome We will not be moved When the earth gives way For the reason one is overcome And for every fear for the risen one is overcome Body 
Psalm 16. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for the technology that we have where we get to still talk about your word and be in your presence together even when we're apart at our own homes. Please be with all of the medical staff who are having to deal with the virus and please be with all of the students and families who are stuck at home. Um, please keep us to keep growing in relationship with you and continue to worship you every day. In your name, amen. Well, it was an unintentional case of social distancing when I was a kid. 
uh, my family and I, we had, we had gone to the local mall and then there was a time that uh, I needed to go to the restroom and my, my mom put my older brother John in charge of taking me, escorting me and making sure that we got back uh, to rendezvous with her and carry on with our trip to the mall. Well, I thought I was too big for that. I thought I was too grown for that. I didn't want somebody else looking out for me, so I chose to take off. And uh, while my brother was still washing his hands, as he was supposed to do for 20 seconds or more, while my brother was still washing his hands, I bolted, I took off, and I thought, I'm launching out on my own, and I'm going to make it on, on my own. Well, what I didn't know is that John and my mom, they had made a plan for a different place to rendezvous and I didn't know where that place was so all of a sudden I found myself in this mass of humanity around me and even though I was completely surrounded I felt totally isolated I felt totally all alone and I began to panic I began to panic and I can remember even as a little kid just standing there in the middle of Baybrook Mall just shouting in this crying voice mom mom and before I knew it, I mean, before I could get even too panicky about it, I hear the squeals and screams of my mom at a distance shouting that I was going to be recovered. Well, boy, in that moment, what I felt felt like I was going to be alone for the rest of my life. I felt like I was lost. I felt, I felt terrible and horrified. I felt like I would never get to see my family ever again, even during the span of just those couple of moments, that feeling of terror washed over me. Well, what I want to talk about tonight in Refuge is this. There is a distinct difference between what you feel and what is real. What I felt in that moment was that I was lost forever. I would never see my family again, and I was completely going to be on my own for the rest of my existence. What was real is that my mom was not too far away, that my brother was in hot pursuit right after me, having not dried his hands yet, and, and that I was soon to be found. But in that moment, I, what I felt and what was real were two separate things. Well, the thing is in our lives, there's lots of feelings that we can get. There's feelings that we can have that convince us that our situation is beyond help. It's beyond hope. But the reality is this, the reality, the truth is that God is always with us no matter what our circumstances are, that God is always with us. And tonight as we look in, in, in Psalm 42, I want us to look at a passage of scripture that's written again as a song. It's written as a song of celebration and as a song of reminder saying, hey, no matter how I ever feel, what is real is that God is always with me. Let's look together at Psalm 42. We'll just go ahead and read the whole thing and then we'll go back and look at what this means. Psalm 42. For the director of music, a masquil of the sons of Korah. Verse 1. As the deer pants for streams of living water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why are you so troubled within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, from the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep. In the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. And at night, his song is with me a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. 
Well, we're going to start out tonight looking at this man who is wrestling with this question. It's wrestling with this internal question that is trying to reconcile the way that I feel versus what is real. And I think to really grasp what's going on in Psalm 42, there's really two questions that we need to entertain. We need to understand uh, these two questions. The first question is this, who wrote this psalm? And the second question is, what was going on with him? Well, the first question, who wrote this psalm? It's pretty easy to identify. We see that at the beginning, at that little... uh, parenthetical note that's right before verse one it says it's of the sons of Korah so it's it's one of the one of the men who is a part of these music ministers who uh, who ministered the music during the days of the of the temple of King David and it's one of these men who wrote this song now the second question is more difficult what was going on with this guy and the honest true answer is we don't know I mean, anybody who speculates on this is absolutely just doing that. They're just speculating. We don't know what it was that happened, but something happened. Something happened in this man's life that took him from the heights of being one of the people who led others into the procession of God, who was one of the people who was leading this festive procession to somebody who had a downcast soul that was so down that even other people took notice and said, hey, I thought you were supposed to know God. Where is your God? What happened to this guy? We don't know. And I actually think it's actually pretty good that we don't know. And I think it's on purpose that God would inspire Scripture in such a way where we don't know the specific details of why this man's soul was downcast. But you and I, at times in our lives, whether it's something that surrounds the thing that's sweeping the world right now or something else that's going on in your life, we know why. We know the things that allow our soul to be downcast. The things that discourage us and make us feel as though God is a long way off off how did this man go from leading to procession to saying my tears have been my food day and night we simply don't know but whatever it is that goes on in your life whatever it is that causes you to feel like you have no hope what is real is the truth that God is with you that he loves you he will never leave you he will never forsake you so let me ask you this question right now when your soul is downcast what is it that you choose to believe and it really is that it's a choice You're going to choose to believe the things that you feel or you're going to choose to believe that which is real. Let's look again at verse 1. Psalm 42 verse 1. This man begins his prayer by crying out to God. He says, as the deer pants for streams of living water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? He begins his prayer crying out saying, God, all that I want in my life is just to meet with you from the depths of my soul. Just like a deer pants after streams of living water, my soul thirsts for you, oh God. When can I go and meet with God? Do you ever feel that way? Do you ever feel that way that you are just in desperation? God, I need to hear from you. And then in the midst of times that we feel like we're isolated, in the midst of times that we're we're not in as frequent communication with our friends as we'd love to be, it is really easy for our soul, for our mind to slip over into this thought of, I'm absolutely all alone and things will never be the same ever again. Well, this psalmist hasn't even stated the reason for his problem, but he already knows what the solution is. He knows that the solution is meeting with God. And that's the solution for you and I too, to meet with God. Let's take a look at verse 3. He says, my tears have been my food day and night while people say to me all day long, where is your God? I mean, this man is in bad shape. He says, my tears have been my food day and night. I mean, evidently the grocery store that he was shopping at had some bare shelves as well because all this guy has to feast on day and night is his tears. This is really a way of him just saying, look, I cannot shake this feeling. I cannot shake this feeling that I'm all alone and I'm just going to be alone for the rest of my life and that things will never be the same between me and God ever again. 
Has there ever been a time in your life that you felt that way, that you felt so distant from God that you just felt like it would never be the same ever again? Here's something that I want you to bank on. This is absolutely true. My circumstances and my feelings have absolutely no effect on God's omnipresence. <laughs> the, the way that I feel or the circumstances that besiege me in my life have absolutely no impact on whether or not God is real, on whether or not God is there. God is there regardless of my circumstances. God is true regardless of how I feel. So no matter what it is that you're feeling, what is real is that God is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Let's continue on verse 4. He says, these things I remember. These things I remember as I pour out my soul. I remember how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one and with shouts of joy among the festive throng. I promise you guys, as, even as I read this passage of scripture today, I don't, I don't know if it was a feeling of joy or a feeling of sorrow that I had, but I felt something. Even as he's reading these words, he's saying, look, I remember I remember how I used to go in joy to the house of God. And it makes me think about you and me right now. In this place where I'm standing right now, we can't all be here right now. Circumstances dictate that we can't all be gathered here. But I remember, it makes me think about the times when main stage is full and the third floor hallways are filled with people. It makes me feel like, it makes me reminisce about the times that we're gathered together at D-Now and youth camp and on mission trips and all these things. And it just makes me overjoyed at the thought of us all being together. But at the same time, it makes me miss it all that much more that we don't get to see each other, that we don't get to be together physically right now. And this man is having that same feeling. He's saying, look, I remember, I remember the times that I used to be able to go to the house of God. I remember that I used to lead that festive throng. I remember the great times that we used to have. And he's saying, where are those times? When will those times come back? We continue on verse five. He asks this question, why my soul are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my savior and my God. Now what verse 5 represents is the chorus to this song. We see it in verse 5. We're going to see it again in verse 11. This is almost this man kind of, you can hear this internal pep talk that he's having. This man is speaking. You read it and you heard it right. This man is speaking to his own soul. You ever do that? You ever have a conversation with your own soul? I know you do because I know that I do as well. This man is speaking with his own soul. He's saying, why, oh my soul, are you downcast? I know you're experiencing what you feel, but what is real is that God will never leave you. So why, oh my soul, why are you downcast? Why so troubled within me? Put your hope in God. It's almost as if this man is trying to talk himself into doing what he knows is right. We continue on verses 6 and 7. He says, my soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of Jordan, from the heights of Hermon, from, the, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. I mean, you get a sense of this battle that's raging within this man. He knows that it's right. He knows that it's right to put his hope in God, but the weight of his pain keeps beating him down and he's simply confessing to God God I know that it shouldn't be this way but my soul is downcast within me he's trying to talk himself out of it but he's saying I got to be honest with you God my soul is downcast within me I know what is real but I can't help experiencing what I feel and maybe that's where you are tonight as well well don't trust what you feel. Trust what is real. Look at the realization that he comes to in verse 8. He says, by day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. This man has been struggling all along with the things that he feels and yet he states what is real. He says what is real is that day and night 
Your love is with me and your love is directed toward me. He says, God, I know that this is true all day long. I know that this is true all through the night. And that means all the time that there is never a time that God gets tired. There's never a time that God takes a break. He says, look, I know that this is what is real. What is real is that you are with me all the time, that constantly your love is directed toward me, that, that you sing a song over me all through the night. I know that's what is real, and I can't help but what I feel. He says that this is a prayer to the God of my life. He says, God, this is my prayer. My prayer is that I will be able to feel it now, that I will be able to feel what is real. I may not feel it right now, but I know that you are with me and that you love me. Now, this man has some tough questions for God. Look at verses 9 and 10. Now, if you ever think that God is not a big boy and God can't handle your tough questions, just look at so many people profiled in the Bible. God wants and can handle your tough questions. Look at the tough questions that this man places to God in verse 9 and 10. He said, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? This man is being honest with God. And if I I just want to know in your life, do you have a personal relationship with God to such a degree that you feel like you can ask God anything? God desires for you to be honest with him. God wants your tough questions. And with all the things that are swirling around in our lives and our world right now, it is natural. And yes, it is right to place our questions before the God of everything, before the God of the universe. God wants your questions. Now, this man is asking questions. He's saying, God, why have you forgotten me? Has God really forgotten him? No. We might ask uh, dumb questions, but they're honest questions. And God desires for us to come to him in transparency and in honesty. And even for right now, for the things that you're enduring in your life, bring your questions to him. And so this man ultimately comes to this final resolution as he repeats that chorus that we heard earlier in that self-pep talk that he's giving to himself. Verse 11, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Folks, we live in some troubling times and there are lots of things that are going on in our world right now that might cause us to feel like we are all alone and even lead us to feel like God has forgotten all about us. But what is real is that you are never alone. What is real is that God is with us all the time. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. My challenge to you and I right now is to clasp onto, to hang onto tightly, hang on to what is real and don't be ruled simply by what you feel. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you even for the technology of this opportunity for us to experience worship together. I thank you so much for Macy, for Matthew, for Michael, for their dedication to be a part of this. I thank you so much for the audiovisual team who makes it possible for us to have this worship time together. And God, as we've looked at this passage of Scripture today, God, I pray that you would remind us of what is real and that we wouldn't be consumed by the things that we feel, but that you would consume us with the reality that you are true that you are righteous, that you are always with us, and you will never forsake us. May we live our lives with hope and trust in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
casting out all fear. The hand that holds the heavens is the mighty hand that saves. The voice that calms the storm. by name I'm singing in the victory the victory of the cross resting in the shadow of your redeeming love I'm standing on the promise the promise of new life cause I am yours forever and Jesus you are mine Jesus, you are mine. When I have forgotten the fullness of your grace. Yes, I remember Calvary When you took my place I'm singing in the victory The victory of the cross Resting in the shadow of Your redeeming love I'm standing on the promise The promise of new life I'm yours forever. Jesus, you are mine. Oh, Jesus, you are mine. There is no one like you, God. Love immeasurable and strong. There is no one like you, God. So lead this heart to sing in all. There is no one like you, God. No love immeasurable and strong. Thank you so much for joining with us in worship uh, through Refuge Bible Study. You're going to find us right here on this YouTube channel, which is FBC Garland Student Ministry. Uh, Go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Share this channel with uh, your friends from church or friends who even don't go to our church. And we're going to get to experience worship uh, through, through this YouTube channel. Every Wednesday night, you're going to find this posted right here. And then also, in the meantime, we're going to be adding some other content to this YouTube channel as well. So please keep checking back. Keep being on the lookout for that. And we got a couple of other exciting things. As fresh as this afternoon, our Refuge Band has come up with some really cool ideas. Hey, if we got to do worship online like this, we can at least have a little bit of fun with it. So be on the lookout for some announcement about some theme nights that we're going to do over the next couple of Wednesday nights. We might do 
something like pajama night or crazy socks night or a funny hat night, something like that. Just be looking, be tuned in to all of our social media stations through our, uh, through our Facebook fan page, through Instagram, through this YouTube channel. Look for announcements about that as well. So we're going to be having a great time. I love you guys so much. I miss the fact that we don't get to be together right now, but at least we can share together in what the Lord is doing in our hearts and our lives. Let's pray together and then we'll continue on with our day. Lord, we love you. We thank you that you brought us to, uh, to this kind of an experience. God, we thank you so much uh, for the ability to praise you in the midst of circumstances that would otherwise be troubling to us. God, we pray that you would focus our hearts and our minds, our lives on what is real and make us not subject to the things that we feel. We love you, God, and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.